Very few people know anything about Siberia. They just assume that it's cold, really far away, and it's mostly a desolate, abandoned landscape. They are right and wrong at the same time. If you would break Siberia away from Russia and make it its own country, it would still be the biggest country in the world. The vastness of this land simply doesn't compare to anywhere else. To be able to comprehend it, we need to start breaking it down. Let's start in the middle. Krasnoyarsk Krai is the third largest subnational governing body in the world. It covers an area of 2,339,700 square kilometers. That is larger than Greenland and a bit smaller than Congo or about 13% of Russia. And all this land is populated by about 2.8 million people. That is slightly more than the tiny country of Lithuania. So there's well over one kilometer of land for each living person. And the vast majority of these people are ethnic Russians. The territory experiences conditions of three climactic belts, Arctic, subarctic, and humid continental. In the north, there are less than 40 days with temperatures above 10 Celsius, while in the south there are 110, 120 such mild days. Permafrost, that is ground, which continuously remains frozen, starts from Lesosibirsk and is pretty much continuous by the time we reach the northernmost parts of the Krai. Staying in the north, we can also note a number of Arctic islands. These are covered with tundra vegetation. The sea surrounding these is covered with pack ice. The climate here is truly severe and the sun doesn't rise for up to two months of the year. It may still be possible to walk to some of these islands when the sea freezes, as ancient tools have been found there. So you definitely wouldn't be the first to try, but you are far more likely to fail as the ice is thinning out every year due to global warming. And it might not be long till these northern reaches are used regularly for transporting goods. The most prominent river is the Yenisei. It is the fifth longest river system in the world and the largest to drain into the Arctic Ocean. It follows a northerly course before draining into the Kara Sea. On the way there it passes through Krasnoyarsk, which is the largest settlement on its course, unless counting its Mongolian tributary near Ulaanbaatar. During World War II, Nazi Germany and the Japanese Empire agreed to divide Asia along a line that followed the Yenisei and Chinese and Soviet borders. If you were ever looking at the map of Krasnoyarsk Krai, you would probably pass over this, the Putorana State Natural Reserve. I mean, even if you zoom way out on Google Maps, it really stands out, kind of like a tumor or something. This nature reserve takes up 18,872 and a half square kilometers. It's incredible because the site contains complete subarctic and arctic ecosystems in an isolated mountain range. The combination of remoteness, naturalness and strict protection ensures that ecological and biological processes continue with minimum human interference. The site was created 250 million years ago when a huge body of magma rose to the surface from 2,900 kilometers inside the Earth, creating these flat top mountain massifs divided by deep and wide canyons. I would love to give you directions about how to get there, but unless you are a very resourceful individual who can afford expensive tours, or a scientist with a permit on an expedition, there is no way for you to go. There are no roads you can take to drive here. Even the nearby city of Norilsk, with some 175,000 people living there, is essentially an island. Not least because you need a government-issued permit to visit, but because the only way to get there is with an airplane or a ship that crosses multiple Arctic seas. It is simply impossible to maintain paved roads this far up past the Arctic Circle, and driving them would be equally dangerous, not to mention the insane distances which would be involved. So, why are people living here at all, you might ask? Well, Russian settlement of the area, mostly by Cossacks, began in the 17th century, and the construction of the Trans-Siberian Railway sped everything up. But the quick answer is natural resources. 95% of the country's platinum, 80% of nickel, 75% of cobalt, copper, coal, 
and gold are all here. Krasnoyarsk also produces 20% of Russian timber. And the vast majority of this wealth is extracted and processed in the south of the Krai, where over 80% of the population reside. Norilsk is the only settlement of any significant size past the Arctic Circle. The majority of the cities are way down south, and Krasnoyarsk is the largest by far, serving as the cultural and industrial center. About a million people live here. Then there's the industrial city of Akhinsk with some 110,000 people, Kansk, one of the largest coal areas of the Soviet Union, 94,000 people, Zhelyaznogorsk, established in 1950 for the production of weapons-grade plutonium, it used to be a secret city, 84,000 people live there now, Minusinsk, an important cultural and archaeological center with a population of some 71,000 people, Zhelyaznogorsk, another closed town, also involved in enriching uranium, some 69,000 people. Then there's also Lesosibirsk, Nazarovo and Sharupov, to name the 10 biggest settlements in the Krai. And so Krasnoyarsk city is clearly the cultural and economic center of this region. And if you're ever touring around Russia or hop on the Trans-Siberian Railway, then you might actually have a chance of coming here. Unlike so many of the other cities which can be somewhat strict about permitting access or have no roads leading there, Krasnoyarsk, despite being nestled deep in the Siberian taiga, is relatively easy to access and is growing fast and catching up on Novosibirsk as capital of Siberia. It's the easternmost city in Russia with a population over 1 million. In other words, if if you keep moving east while staying in Russia, you won't find a larger city. It's one of the main stops of the Trans-Siberian Railway, and the Yenisei flows through it. Together, the railway and the river provide the force for Krasnoyarsk's growth, some 3,300 kilometers away from Moscow and about 3,100 kilometers to Vladivostok. Krasnoyarsk is pretty much the midway point of the Trans-Siberian Railway, and it's a smoking industrial center. Almost one-tenth of Russia's timber resources are located here, and after Tumen, it has Russia's largest oil and gas deposits. It is also rich in other minerals. About 60% of its foreign investment is to be found in mining, oil and manufacturing. Krasnoyarsk was founded in 1628 as a fortress meant to protect the most distant reaches of the Russian Empire. Gold mines were found nearby also, thus making the city a prosperous trade center. During World War II, dozens of factories were evacuated from Ukraine and Western Russia and moved to the east, over the Volga and Ural Mountains, and even as far as Krasnoyarsk. After the war, additional large plants were constructed. As a result, this city is an industrial Russian heavyweight. The Krasnoyarsk hydroelectric dam significantly influences the local climate. Naturally, the Yenisei should freeze over in the bitterly cold Siberian winter, but because the dam releases unfrozen water year-round, the river never freezes for a stretch up to 300 kilometers long. In the winter, the frigid air interacts with warm river water to produce fog, which shrouds Krasnoyarsk and other downstream areas. It can be an incredible sight. It was constructed from 1956 to 1972, and it supplies about 6,000 megawatts of electricity. It is 1,065 meters long and about 124 meters tall. Beginning with the opening of the 10th turbine in April 1971, the dam was the world's single largest power plant, until 1983 when it was overtaken by a dam in Washington state. The Krasnoyarsk Dam is held up to be a landmark symbol and it is depicted on the 10 ruble note. Its construction created an enormous body of water known as the Krasnoyarsk Reservoir. This reservoir is one of the largest artificial reservoirs in the world, as it covers a total area of about 2,000 square kilometers, and it's sometimes referred to as the Krasnoyarsk Sea. Chekhov once said, Krasnoyarsk is the best and the most beautiful of all Siberian cities, with smoke-colored and dreamy mountains that remind me of the Caucasus. In most ways, Krasnoyarsk isn't any different from other Russian cities. You will find the usual Orthodox churches and communist monuments, but you are more likely to experience Siberian hospitality. And the city is also dotted with many fountains, and for some reason a bunch of tiny and not-so-tiny Big Ben-like clock towers.
In the late 1970s, the Soviet Union began constructing a phased array radar station near Krasnoyarsk. These devices were originally conceived for use in military radar systems to steer a beam of radio waves quickly across the sky to detect planes and missiles. This violated the ABM treaty. The treaty was intended to stop the nuclear arms race between the US and the Soviet Union. Beginning in 1983, the United States demanded its removal, but the Soviet Union only admitted the radar station was a violation in 1989. Then equipment was slowly removed from the site and by by 1992, it was officially declared to be dismantled, though the equipment from the site was likely just relocated to a site nearby. Krasnoyarsk and other cities in the Krai have a dark side also. There are some fairly obvious downsides living in an industrial powerhouse. It was on 17th of February that airvisual.com measured air quality in Krasnoyarsk as worse than anywhere in the world. This doesn't happen all the time, but the city sure has days when it can look desperately gloomy and the authorities have to warn the population to stay indoors. Norilsk is probably an even more interesting example of this problem. It has long held the title of the most polluted city in the country. It is said that people there die 10 to 15 years younger than elsewhere in Russia because of the heavy smog and acid rain produced by its industry. With a little under 2 million tons of sulfur dioxide emitted each year, plant life, including trees, is non-existent in the immediate surroundings of the city. In 2011, a study estimated that an area as large as 4,000 km squared surrounding the city was showing signs of vegetation damage not to mention a number of oil spills which have occurred there recently. I truly hope that the Siberian heartland can improve its relationship with Mother Nature. Now it would be a mistake for me not to wrap up this video with a big bang. The Tunguska event was a 12 megaton explosion that occurred near the Podkamenaya Tunguska River on the morning of June 30th, 1908. The explosion over the sparsely populated eastern Siberian taiga flattened an estimated 80 million trees over an area of 2,150 kilometers of forest. Asteroid approached with a speed of about 27 kilometers per second, and it is classified as an impact event, even though no impact crater has been found. The object is assumed to have disintegrated at an altitude of 5 to 10 kilometers, rather than having hit the surface of the Earth. The Tunguska event is the largest impact event in recorded history, though much larger impacts have occurred in prehistoric times. An explosion of this magnitude would be capable of destroying a large metropolitan area. So it's kind of fortunate that Krasnoyarsk Krai was the impact zone with its low population density. Now you have to learn about this Russian city in China. This is not Russia. This is not Ukraine. Click up here. And here is my Patreon map. These guys rule and support this channel directly. Would you like to take your spot before it's gone? Reach out. Bitcoin is also nice. Now, where do you think this footage was taken? Leave a comment and have a guess. Geo Perspective, out.